On today's episode, we have a very, very large announcement concerning the show and a very particular league. And then the training camp news is non-stop, including some news that's happening live during the show. Don't miss a moment. Subscribe to this channel, like this video, leave some comments, and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Welcome in one and all. What just happened? It's not the way I wanted to start August. <laughs> but my voice is struggling. Uh, Say, we're, we're back from Los Angeles. Right. And uh, the, two, la la the two of you forgot your voices over yeah, there. Yeah, I did a lot of what we call screaming on in that. The, in the biz. Yeah, in the biz, you know, when you're in this industry uh, and you're shouting at the top of your lungs, we say that that's screaming. Yes. So I did that. And now I sound like this. And it was it was great too because in the green room right before we went out, Jason's like telling himself, <laughs> like I can do a lot of damage to my voice in the first couple seconds of running out on stage. Mm -hmm. So I need to really be careful. And there you just went full Jack Black and just <laughs> soared through the crowd. You you did some sort of silhouette dove that erupted a into shadow puppet, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that was just, uh, you know, just off the cuff, just yeah, improvisational just, uh, shadow puppetry. Who I am. <laughs> but despite the um, <clears throat> less than welcome in, we are here. It is August. We have the Fantasy Footballers episodes five beautiful days a week. Kill! That is correct. Uh, thank you, Brooks. We have uh, a lot to get into. There is some um, camp buzz, major news oh, to talk man. about. Camp is a buzzing. Yeah, and it's just, I mean, they're videos to build your own biases yep. all over the yep. place, which I am doing without regard. Oh, we're all doing it. Regard. Uh, there's Keenan Allen making fun of Russell oh, Wilson. Oh, man, that was so good. Hey, which, hey Bolt fan. Let's ride. Let's ride. Let's I don't ride. know why we don't do. We should have been doing that. Let's yeah. ride. Um, hey, Foot Clan. What is nice Let's ride. is that <laughs> what Keenan did is he showed us that NFL players mm -hmm. also know what a goober <laughs> Russell Wilson is. This isn't lost on them. But does that mean that, like, what I want to know, and I, maybe I know the answer already, and again, Russell Wilson, very good football player. But when he's in the room and everyone's making fun of him, does he miss it? Does he not realize what's happening? Oh, he he fully thinks that Keenan Allen is like, oh, he's doing what he's I in. do. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Limited. He's like, yeah, let's spread this around. I, I don't know. I've expressed it before. Of, I Is he above the game he, or is he below the game, Mike? I just I have no idea how to read Russell Wilson if he's just leaning in to being the, like, the, the president of – Gooberville, right? Or is he just like, yeah? Is he completely oblivious to, he is to where he is? Oblivious. I don't know. I'm I don't. Positive. I don't I'm know that he you. is. I'm telling you. I, I he can't has get there. absolutely no idea that he thinks he is as smooth and cool as it gets. I actually, I think Jason's right, and you saw him show up to camp, right? Yeah. You had the contrast between Aaron Rodgers showed up and he looked like Nick Cage. He had the, the wife beater on. From Con Air. From Con Air. Awful the long air. hair. Russ showed up in his own swag. All, his own jersey. Wears his own jersey to camp. He's just saving a step. And I'm not talking about like on the practice field. I'm talking like getting out of the car. Right. But like. He's saving a step. I mean like when, when I go to work out, I wear the shirt I'm going to wear to the gym. Does it have your face on it? Well, it would have my number on it. Okay. Okay. So I get it. He's just being efficient. I digress. Uh, if you want to see the LA live show, we had a great time with everybody out there. That is uh, up on YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. We also just posted a 2021 uh, oh, man. highlight reel from last year. So some of the moments from last year's show, which my personal favorite, 
still the Cortland Sutton situation <laughs> where like simultaneous to Jason saying that Cortland Sutton probably won't be in Denver because of Tim Patrick's contract. I mean, the ink, he was signing yeah. the contract while Jason said it. It was great, but there's a ton of those moments up there on YouTube. And that'll give you the chance to click that. Uh, what do we say? We say smash the subscribe button. Well, that's that what, what the kids the, say. The kid, Jason says it too. I am a kid. At heart. I say click it with authority. Uh oh, that that sounds very and I say parental. You tap it because you're 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 not, you're not on a computer here. Oh, they yeah, don't have a mouse on your phone. Yeah, oh, yeah. tap that button. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Tap yep. it. Twitter and the bell at the FF Ballers, and uh, we have an announcement. Take it away, Mike. Ladies and gentlemen, the time that you wait for all year, it is now. Hopefully, is it? you've yes. Hopefully, you've been getting ready because the Listener League is now officially open. We are accepting entries for one week and one week only. Please do not let the one week expire if you want to submit an entry. But here's how it works. Listener League at fantasyfootballers.com. That is where you will send your submission. And if you're saying, I have no idea what to submit. Or what you're talking about. Well, the listener, they know what we're talking about. But if you want to play in a league with us, our official listener league, where the three of us, we each have a team, and then we hang out with listeners. You get to join our Slack channel, and we cut it up all year long. It's just it's a really good Before time. Before your infinite or inevitable demise. Of course, of course. Uh, but here's how you get in with a submission. You just impress us, make us laugh, make us you know feel something. What we do not want is don't tell us how you're the the best fantasy football player in your league. You're gonna crush us. Yeah, like we get. Don't give that. us the resume, the seventeen paragraph yeah. resume. Your trophy case, we get it. If you you're, have a really cool long story attached to your submission, like many many paragraphs, right? I'll bet it was great. <laughs> I will bet that story was great. We, but I re <laughs> we get a lot of the submissions, so keep it as concise as you can, and just just have fun with it. That's that's my best advice. Have fun with it, and show us that you will be a fun person to play fantasy football with. And uh, you know, if you're new, you might not know this, but Brooks, we met Brooks because of a listener league entry. He put a video together that we were impressed with. Still one of my favorites. And so, um, listener league at fantasyfootballers dot com. This will be the only time we mention it. Yes. And don't uh, ask for the address on the socials because you will not get it. No, and don't send us the oh, "I'm so sorry, I yep. missed the deadline" yes. email because through eight years, I think we have never relented to the we it is tear filled. It is impossible to narrow it down. Like every year, it's just so crazy to say that some of these wonderful things yeah. can't get in. So when you come late, that's sorry. It's really nice, actually. It's like, oh, that was that one's easy. Also, a couple other things before we get into uh, the news. First of all, reminder, the Ultimate Draft Kit. It's available at ultimatedraftkit.com. You need it because mm -hmm. drafts are coming. Um, it is upgraded uh, through and through this year. So we're really excited about it. You can check that out. And then tomorrow... Oh, man. We have a very special mock draft episode. It's home, Mike. Which we're calling Mock Draft Mayhem. And here's how it's going to work. Jason versus Mike in a head-to-head -head mock draft. Mono e mono. That's right. And so you already have – you're building some of the vitriol right now. I hate him. I don't um, really need to build it due okay. to my overwhelming you're hatred already, you're of maxed Jason. Out. Yeah. But – the reason it's called Mock Draft Mayhem is that I will be periodically throwing some mayhem into the draft. I've got some power-ups I'm going to use. The conductor of the mayhem. And not only will I be evaluating ruthlessly both of your teams, but I will be causing you issues. I will, at random, bring some mayhem to the draft because, let's be honest, fantasy drafts are full of mayhem Yes. and tilt. And players that you thought would be there being gone. And so at certain times during the draft, mm. I'm going to veto your pick. I'm going to make a pick for you. Mm. I'm going to give the other person power over your pick. <laughs> oh, man. So it's going to be very Brutal. fun. Very fun. And so that's on tomorrow's show. Can't wait for that. Uh, quick question of the day. 
Ryan in Ohio, it's actually one we get a lot. Mm -hmm. Is it crazy to take both Travis Kelsey and Mark Andrews at 207 and 304 if they were available? Uh, which does seem plausible that if you are drafting in that spot, both players could be on the board when you're picking. They, they certainly could be. So yeah. this is like a double elite tight end strategy. Are you in? Absolutely not. <laughs> no, I would not be in. Um, and it's not because each player – I mean, you could argue. You could say, well, if Travis Kelsey slipped to the 207, you got to take him. That's unbelievable value. And the same thing – for Mark Andrews in the third. Both are good values, so why can't you take them both? The reason is because you only have to start, and this is, I'm talking and speaking of generic leagues, where you only start one tight end, and you start multiple wide receivers and multiple running backs. Yes, you might be able to use the second player here, and let's even presume you can use the second player. I presume player that you can. In your flex. That's great. But you are taking two-thirds of your first three picks and saying, I am not getting a running back, I am not getting a wide receiver, you are going to be at such a disadvantage at the positions that deal with more injuries, more bye weeks, more starts. You just don't want to take one of those draft picks away. It's not because it's a bad draft pick. It's the opportunity cost lost when you are not – grabbing another running back or wide receiver early on your flexibility I mean you're you're now saying that my starting roster is Travis Kelsey and in my flex it's Mark Andrews which if both of these guys hit it's possible I mean they you know when they have the years that we're used to they their scoring would finish as a top 10 wide receiver that's that's not uncommon for these guys but you just you are you are so locked in to Mark Andrews being your flex while uh, well, everything Jason was saying about the opportunity cost, and you just like you can't play matchups because you feel so. It, it's like when you take the early quarterback, that's your dude, and you are you're locked into that strategy for weeks and weeks and weeks until you could get to the point where it was a such a a bad idea to stick with that person, but you feel locked into them because of the draft. Yeah, cost. where where it would make sense is let's say you took an early tight end, you took Kelsey, or you took Andrews, and then someone unexpectedly falls to the eighth, ninth round. Nobody's wanting tight ends, and there's Darren Waller, and you've already got him. Well, at that point, you are – that's where it's like, okay, I am filling in my flex. I've already got all my running backs, my wide receivers, my depth. Then there is a situation that allows it. But in the second and third round, there's too much draft cost. Yeah, and the logic of trying to keep one of those players away from your league mates doesn't hold up because one of your league mates can draft them, and you'll probably play them one time. Mm -hmm. So you're not really doing, you know, it's not helping you every week to have that on your roster. Um, but yeah, good answer, guys. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. You, you should do this for a living. Yes. All right. Into the news we go. News and notes from around the league. All right. A lot of news to cover. Yep. Beginning with uh, Deshaun Watson, who was suspended for the first six games of the regular season. Um, I really see no benefit at this point. I mean, it's been covered by every media outlet in the on the earth to, you know, grandstanding about the suspension itself. I think we just dive into the fantasy implications and yep. the circumstances therein, which, look, Deshaun Watson has been suspended for six six games. It is not impossible that the league – does not agree to that suspension or they attempt to extend it two more games, four more games. They have until Thursday to review. And then the nice thing is there are two days after that for the counter uh, from the, the NFLPA side. So we, we will have resolution to this soon. I mean, it's nice that we, we actually have some resolution now, but there's still the lingering, well, are they going to appeal? Is is this going to hold up at six? The answer to that even will come soon. So, you know, we had – I think we all had him missing six games in the projections. Six to eight, yeah. So, you know, huge fantasy impact in terms of all of the weapons there. Their quarterback. Hey! Oh, the baby! It's going to be Jacoby. Yeah. Jacoby uh, beef uh, – Where's the beef brisket? Yeah, the Jacoby Brissett, here's some numbers for you. Over the last 20 starts, he's averaged 207 passing yards. Um, we know who he is. And he is not a player that's going to excite you when it comes to the pass-catching options. 
He's a competent quarterback. Yeah, he's a solid backup. I would view him very similarly to Geno getting a start, which is I'm not excited about the pass catching options. He can execute an offense. The running backs, I'm not that concerned about the Watson versus Jacoby situation, but you know, I needed a reason to be excited about Amari Cooper or Donovan Peoples Jones or the other pass catching weapons, David Bell. Like I needed a I needed something else to get me there, and Jacoby doesn't do that. Do you agree? No, in the in the passing game, if you're talking about your redraft leagues, your home leagues, it's gonna be very difficult to pull the trigger on Amari Cooper on on these on these you know receiving options we've talked uh, a lot about DeAndre Hopkins and the fact that he's missing six games and what a blight that is on your roster to have to have someone you you can't drop you you know what I mean but he is clogging a spot and that could end up being some of these receiving options it's not that you couldn't start Amari Cooper with Brissett but historically if you go back and look at his wide receiver one um, cause he's had a lot of starts in the NFL. We have plenty of data on Brissett. His wide receiver one is not very valuable, far below wherever they are usually drafted. So, um, I'm, I don't know how to quit Amari Cooper. I've had this problem for a long, long time. Um, ask Dallas. It, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I think in best ball, he is actually probably undervalued right now because you're going to get, you know, if, if it's not a massive tournament, if it's, you know, a, a 12, team league or something like that, then you're going to get the entirety of the season. You'll get all of those games. And should he have one or two good games with Brissett, you still get that as well. So I'm, I'm fine with Amari Cooper and best ball. The running backs, though, yeah, they are set up to succeed. The schedule for Cleveland, I, I mean, it starts off so easy. They could win these games with Brissett. And it's not because of Brissett. It's because of Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Yeah, they opened the season against Carolina. Who Carolina, pretty solid defense uh, the last couple of years. So that that's not fantastic. But then you get the Jets. Pittsburgh, who they were shockingly bad last year against the run. The Falcons, the Chargers. So you, you have a the opening month for the Cleveland Brown running backs where I would presume they will be leaned on even more than – uh, then the time when Deshaun Watson is calling the calling the plays up there for the Browns, so I'm not scared of the Browns running back ADPs at all. Breaking news! Breaking news! The Dolphins will be forfeiting a first round selection. What in the 2023 Ooh. NFL draft and a third round selection in the 2024 what? NFL draft, and their owner Stephen Ross is suspended. Through October, after a league investigation, this oh. is via oh man, is this the Brady this stuff? This is via sleeper. So breaking news right now. It, but why? What did what did they do? Well, this is um, this is coming in. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the investigation related to um the Brady situation, right? Is I or I don't know. Wow, this one's from at my sports update. Who is like Ari is a he's a valuable or a, a a known source. I'm sure this will be everywhere. Soon, yes. So, so uh, let's we'll find out, man. Yeah, we can follow Stay up on tuned. that. That sucks. <laughs> I mean, a first round pick is that sucks is significant. Oof. All right, I'll get um, to the bottom of this. Yeah, yeah. Follow up on that since that is breaking right now, and it just came through. Alvin Kamara. We talked about him on the show. The battery case that he is dealing with, the legal situation from Pro Bowl weekend, it's delayed another two months in terms of the legal process. So we had said on the show that it's likely or possible, I would say probable, that he was not going to deal with the legal ramifications and suspension this year. It's looking more and more likely now. So, yes, this has been confirmed by Adam Schefter now. Yeah, not, not only that, it, it, it appears it's about uh, you like tampering and the integrity of the game. Remember there was... he was... Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, there was uh, the report when Flores was yes. told like he would be paid to lose games. Yep. So... That's right, yes. Ooh, a, a so tampering was, allegations. So Flores was not lying about that. Uh, I mean, enough was found to lay down a pretty strong hammer here. Yikes. Yeah, that's significant. Um, Good. Back to Alvin Kamara. Good. Uh, Telling it, your coach to lose. Ridiculous. 
Yeah, you're supposed to just whisper. Yeah, that. you hint yeah. at that. Come on. <laughs> You, you don't tell him. I've said it before. Adam Gaze should have been just making that claim for a, a long time. <laughs> Alvin Kamara. Legal process delayed two months. Seems unlikely to have an early season suspension. Probably no suspension at all this year. Is he just, is that risk factor? Like when you look at the ultimate draft kit and Alvin Kamara, have you reduced the risk? factor for Alvin Kamara yeah I I mean it it certainly is reduced because the probability of him being suspended in 2023 versus 2022 has become higher I think that is you know if (laughs) if there were betting odds on whether or not Alvin Kamara would be suspended a game this year I think that the odds on favorite would be that he would not be suspended during this season Uh, right now he's going in the back of the third because of the fears of the suspension now here's what could happen though the the it's been delayed two months we saw this with Ezekiel Elliott in the past if the whole case and the legal proceedings does not uh, go all the way till the next offseason and and um, it is wrapped up this year then you could have Kamara in kind of a worst case scenario where he's suspended maybe for the second half of this year misses the playoffs and things of that nature um Right now where he's going, though, but at the back of the third, he seems like an incredible value because you've got a guy who would probably be, you know, somewhere between pick six and 12 uh, that you can get in your third round. Debo Samuel. Yes, sir. He's been paid. He has. Um, contract details, Mike. Three years, $75 million extension, $58 million guaranteed. He also has some incentives. This and, is where it's interesting. And bonuses, because if you remember... <laughs> oh, you're looking... <laughs> so, when Debo was holding out, saying, oh, I'm not going to be a 49 or trade me, you know, all that jazz, there was a lot of questions. Is it money-related? Is it usage-related? And that seemed to be what a lot of people thought, was that, they, that Debo didn't like the way that they were using him as a running back, trying to maybe pay him like a running back when he's just you know, uh, you know, a, a weapon and a receiver. So now in his new contract, he has pretty massive bonuses for rushing yardage and rushing touchdowns. It's a $650,000 per year. Yeah. For each year, he has 380 or more rushing yards. He can also earn $150,000 if he scores three rushing touchdowns in any year. What this says to me, and when I first statted Debo out as a 49er, I assumed if they were going to rectify this situation that he would be used more as a receiver and they would not do to him what they did last year. But what this says is that the Niners and Shanahan have complete freedom to use him how he wants. He just wanted to be paid for the work. If he's going to be doing that work, give him bonuses. So uh, and he'll be the center of the offense. Yep. Uh, the investigation by the NFL following up on the breaking news. Uh, I will summarize really quickly here what came out from the NFL officially. Dolphins had impermissible communications with quarterback Tom Brady in 20, oh, it's the Brady stuff. in 2019 and 2020 while under contract with the Patriots. The Dolphins had again impermissible communications with Tom Brady during the 2021 season when he was under contract with. The Buccaneers. That stuff was real. In 2022, the Dolphins had impermissible communications with Don Yee, the agent for Sean Payton. That stuff oh, was yeah. real. Oh, that was that was the wildest tale being told. Wait a minute. So you're telling me that when Brady retired and there was these cockamamie, insane rumors that he was trying to orchestrate Sean Payton and Tom Brady going to the Dolphins, that there was legitimacy? Second part of it was related. So that was the first part, impermissible contact with free agents. The second part was related to tanking to improve draft position. The investigation conclusively established the following. They did not intentionally lose games during the 2019 season, uh, and no one was instructed to do so, including Coach Flores. On a number of occasions during the 2019 season, Mr. Ross did express his belief that their position in the upcoming draft should take priority over the team's win-loss record. The comments were made. Um, One such comment is a claim of Mr. Ross to pay Coach Flores $100,000 to lose games. However, phrase such a comment was not intended to be taken as a serious offer. (laughs) So So there you go. The old, I didn't mean it. 
Man, NFL's nice. tip tip-to- tiptoeing around that. They, yeah, uh, it was conclusively seen that they definitely did not. They didn't lose mean the game it to the purpose to the degree of a first and third round pick. Wow. So yeah, yeah. There you go. All right, we're gonna um, take a quick break and come back with some more big time camp news. All right, Steelers running back Najee Harris left practice yesterday with an apparent foot injury. He said it shouldn't be a major deal. Yeah, Tomlin said he got stepped on, and so that that's good news to hear that it was more like uh, on the top. But then there was uh, one of the reporters saying that they watched him limp and climb his way up a hill to where he was out of sight of the fans and then got on a cart to go in the rest of the way. So uh, we'll just monitor it, but thankfully – those types of injuries, if you're stepped on, aren't usually the ones that cause massive damage. All right. Gus Edwards, the Gus bus, according Baltimore, to ESPN. Baltimore Ravens backup running back. Yeah, ESPN's Jamison Hensley reported that he is farther behind Dobbins in the recovery and could miss a chunk of the season. I had literally just traded Gus Edwards in a dynasty league. You did. The day before oh, this my news goodness. broke. You know, the hope and promise, and I feel terrible for, for the man because, you know, Gus was going to have an opportunity last year. Mm-hmm. He was going to have an opportunity this year, and um, it looks like he will not have fantasy relevance at least early in the season. Yeah, it's really tough, this entire backfield. Um, Dobbins' injury being established as much more significant than we thought at, the, at this time last year, uh, you know, you might have neither one of them ready, or if Dobbins is ready week one, we've we've said here we do not expect him to come out week one and get a full workload with the type of injury he's coming back from. I hope he's good. I hope he's you know I I've loved Dobbins. Yes, yes. I think he's very talented. Um, I just don't think he's going to get the workload to be a a great fantasy contributor for the start of the season with Gus Edwards. I'm starting to warm down. You're starting to warm on Dobbins. Oh, okay. I I mean Dobbins timeline seems okay. It's just a matter of will he be himself or will he be I mean the only thing that really matters for our purposes uh, is like will he put up a lot of fantasy points at the beginning of the year? That's what I am still hesitant. Well, the the competition is Mike Davis. Um uh, dude looks like a baby. Yeah. Dude so ty- looks like a baby. So Tyler Beatty and then Corey Clement. Like are you taking Blind shots at any of those players uh, if not, you don't like Dobbins to begin with? Not likely, but I would think to open the season, if Dobbins is is playing week one, he will be uh, mixed in with Mike Davis, would be my guess, which Our, is gross. And then we got big news yesterday. This was a major injury. James Washington yeah. suffered a Jones fracture in practice, surgery. He, he's irrelevant for the fantasy season at this point. It's basically missing the entire fantasy season, and even if he came back, in 10 to 12 weeks, it wasn't like we were all pining for James Robinson no. in this offense. So this has, I think, bigger implications on the other options in Dallas. Yeah, I, I saw a tweet. I Forgive me, I, I can't give you uh, credit. I don't remember what it was, but saying that CeeDee Lamb is now the only wide receiver on the entire roster who has a touchdown in his career. So th- wow. this, this depth chart at wide receiver, this is why Jalen Tolbert – uh, rookie wide receiver drafted this year is getting so much buzz because he is entrenched as the second wide receiver at this point. I mean, and this is why I gen I, you put your moves together. I traded for Zeke in a dynasty league to make a run for a title. I think he's going to be relevant in the passing game, and it's why Dalton Schultz is is very interesting despite the franchise tag. He mm-hmm. has played football on a field with Dak Prescott, and it's also. Uh, Tony Pollard can mix in here. They, I think a lot of people who like Tony Pollard feel that they have to hate Ezekiel Elliott. And people who are oh. stands for Ezekiel Elliott have to say, well, the, Tony Pollard, get that nonsense out. You're saying they could come together? I'm saying that both of these players could be very, very fantasy relevant. Tony Pollard has been spending a lot of time in training camp purely in the slot. And they need wide receivers. Yes. They don't have any. So Pollard's a, a, an electric athlete, explosive receiver. You know, we yep. draft A.J. Dillon, and we draft Aaron Jones. We draft Kareem Hunt, and we draft Chubb. And I think this is turning into one of those offenses that is going to need Zeke and Pollard together. Are you drafting Jalen Tolbert, Mike? Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know what's going to happen with his ADP now, 
but he was already one of those interesting rookies. The the opportun- immediate opportunity there, even with James Washington healthy, w- what we were projecting, and Dak is a good quarterback. We, this, this is a high-powered offense that's going to put up a ton of points. So, yes, Tolbert in the later rounds is a – is a fantastic uh, dart throw. Rams wide receiver Van Jefferson, a couple days ago, news came out that he was still having discomfort in, in, in his knee. Uh, ended up that he needed more surgery. Yeah. So his timetable is to return in a few weeks. Again, this is kind of similar to the James Washington thing in, in as much as, you know, Van Jefferson probably had a little bit more fantasy value, potential sure, dart throw yes, value. Yes. But, you know, the team went out, aggressively pursued Allen Robinson. Uh, there have been some stories about Sean McVay basically selling his blank off to get him to come <laughs> to Los Angeles. I am e- extremely uh, bullish on Allen Robinson's opportunity and ability. Went back and watched almost every play from Allen Robinson last year. I know that it was a bad season. Yeah. But on but- a play-to-play basis, the you know the targets and stuff, the demand of the targets, the quarterback changing – there was a lot going wrong there, but he made a lot of plays that were vintage Allen Robinson during the season. Clearly, the Rams believe that he's still there. He's looked great in camp too. I mean, it, you know, the, the obviously making a good impression. Hi- camp highlights they get out of control. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and so you can't take that as uh, everything, but it's nice to see him dominating some. You know. The Rams have a great defense. The The defenders he's going up against are very, very good, and whether he's making a great play and separating and showing hands away from his body that was awesome or whether he's glued by a defender and just rips the ball away, he has looked very strong. Allen Robinson is someone who certainly needs to move up in my rankings, especially with Van Jefferson out of the way. And I know we think of him as older. He's still 28 years old. I feel like he's hiding in plain sight for fantasy. And and I realized this driving in to work this morning, gentlemen. I, it's running backs early for me. It's all running backs. Okay. It's just I, I love the value I'm finding in the middle rounds with players like Allen Robinson, Mike Williams, Hollywood Brown. If if those guys can fill out my roster, I think they are massively undervalued, and maybe that changes because I talk about it too much. But – I just think I feel I feel I would feel great going into the season with Mike Williams and Allen Robinson as my one and two. All right, and I would be loaded up at a position that I know is going to go through injuries. Uh, it's so much more scarce in finding value. So, as as an enticing as an early Cooper Cup or Al, you know Justin Jefferson or Jamar Chase would be, I don't think when push comes to shove, I'm going to end up there. Yeah, I I am different than you on the names you just mentioned. When you're talking about the elite of the elite, I'm in on those guys. But it is – I f- ever, we don't disagree in what you said as far as your rationale and your reason. When I'm in the second round, guys like CeeDee Lamb, who – I mean, Stephon he's, Diggs. He's, he's, he's alone. Well, st- I include Stephon Diggs in the elite of the elite. Okay. Um, to me, there's four guys that if I can, if I can get Jefferson, if I can get Diggs, if I can get Chase – um and Cooper Cup, I I really like having them. Then the next tier to me, the Tyree Kills, even the Debo's and the CD Lambs, guys that I really really like, they're going next to running backs who are phenomenal. Aaron Jones, um, you know, is in the second round. Uh, Saquon is in the second round. You got a, a lot of really good options where I like the wide receivers in the fourth, fifth round. I don't like the running backs there. So yeah, I, other yeah. than the other than those top end guys, um, we we so we agree and disagree here. Andy. Mm. We do not come together, but mm. we do come together. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Broncos wide receiver KJ Hamler been activated from the PUP free to All practice. Right. Okay. Um, congrats to KJ Hamler on the uh, comeback from a, a bad injury and a difficult situation. I I don't want people to miss understand my tweets or thoughts about KJ Hamler. Uh, I'm a big KJ Hamler fan. He ran a four, two, seven, which was significantly faster than anybody on this roster. I mean, Jerry Judy, you consider to be a fast wide receiver. who ran a four, four, seven, you know, it was like Hamler is going to have a role, but his role for fantasy purposes is going to be to make Russell Wilson even better. Um, I don't think that there's going to be room to grab KJ Hamler in fantasy drafts and see consistent performances from him. Because you're going to have 
so many other weapons. You know, in the live show, we talked about the Ocean's Eleven situation. They're, everyone's invited to the Russell Wilson party. Let's ride. Yeah, let's ride. Get you, Hamlin. Let's ride. Yeah, but, Hamlin, Hamlin. But Hamlin's going to catch some touchdowns. I say he strikes me as someone who, in the season on DraftKings, a Russell Wilson Hamler stack will win a million bucks. Totally. And it, it's one of those, uh, somebody made the comparison to what MBS represented in Green Bay, where you never knew when to play MBS. Mm -hmm. Sure. But MBS was a rocket ship, and he would be available for Aaron Rodgers and make Rodgers a lot better. Uh, Hollywood Brown activated from the uh, non-football injury list. Awesome. So he's going to finally catch some passes from why, Kyler Murray. Why would he have been on the non-football injury list for a hamstring injury? Because it was before training okay. camp started. And then Kyler has COVID. No, oh, so he's not. Uh, the important thing here is that when Kyler got COVID, uh, we kind of saw the new guidelines, which are no guidelines. They're they're basically saying follow the CDC guidelines of five days, um, but there is no formal COVID policy uh, in place the way that there has been the last and no few COVID years. IR anymore. right no COVID IR so it's basically being treated like any other illness. Uh, should have less of an effect on fantasy football, but I promise nothing with COVID. Stupid, right. stupid COVID. I officially, I have. I know it's been a while. Yeah, and we don't get political. You're getting oh, getting on the record. Yeah, but on the record, I don't like COVID. Okay, I'm whoa. I, I am full anti-COVID. I just wow. think it's been stupid. And I don't like it. You're, these are bold words. Yeah, yeah. Is this I, the kind I stand of platform, alone. I is this stand, the kind this of platform you would consider running on? That's right. I will Anti-disease platform, An which I had. No one's really run on an anti-disease. Yeah. yeah, I am totally against all diseases. Cancer? I I, oh, I hate it. Yeah. Hate it. Get it out of here. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, look, this is... Um, and I pledge to continue hating it. <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> I will continue... If I'm elected. ...to hate these diseases <laughs> vote for me my mind is still a little blown right now about this whole like integrity of the game hammer drop by the nfl Jeez. on miami like are there parallels here with um potential integrity of the game punishments for fantasy leagues oh i mean I, I, I will say this i mean one of the things we struggled with in our league of record because we're a keeper league we trade future picks is that as soon as a team was kind of out of the way, mm -hmm. the tanking issue is real. And the problem was it got talked about. <laughs> that's Because it happens for all the teams. There's no team out there that's one win uh, 10 weeks into the season and they're not thinking about their future because it's literally in the best interest of the team. Mm -hmm. So it's really a hard line to walk where it's like, if I'm the owner of a one and nine team, if I am... You're darn right I want to lose. I don't right. want to win another game. Why would I want to hurt my draft pick for the future to to just not make the playoffs? What's more comical is that, at least in the NFL, you could make a compelling argument about that team, that culture, those players winning in spite of your record mm -hmm. can jettison you to a better future, right? You learn to win together. You learn the camaraderie. In fantasy, there's no, none of that. There's none. These the, players aren't on your real team, man. They're playing in the NFL, and no moral victories here. Well, you, you know, you just have to find a scapegoat, and that's why you have a, a co-managers that you can fire all the time. Ooh, uh, that's good advice, Mike. You're like, oh, advice. you blew the season. I mean, Mr. Ross expressing his belief that the Dolphins' position in the upcoming 2020 draft should take priority over the win-loss record. He's saying the quiet part out loud. I mean, yes. you, that's you, what you don't do. You, I mean, that's you just think it, and everyone knows it. The, to me, the crazy stuff, though, is that there was any legitimacy here to Tom Brady and Sean Payton. That is, why, when I heard those, when I heard the rumors that they they were trying to orchestrate that, and that's what they believed was going on. I don't think that there was one percent of me that believed that believed that that was real. It was insane. Wow. It just do, it does make you say like how many moves that have happened have backdoor multi year backdoor but conversations before right. them you know and I'm not I'm not speculating on any specific deals but it's like did Derek Carr and D Devontae Adams did they have a conversation in 2019 saying man someday we really got to figure this out like which is totally fine I mean if yeah. you want to play together that's fine it's I just think players can do it at least they can in the NBA right. It's just when management starts getting involved. I don't even know. 
yeah, I don't know how it relates to whether you're a free agent. You know, it's like there are tampering guidelines as sure. to free agency. Pretty wild. Pretty wild. Is there any other news, Brooksy, that has broken? Oh my gosh. Any other sleeper alerts coming through? I think we're caught up for a couple minutes. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing, Brooksy? Doing great. Yeah. Excellent. Thoughts on uh, COVID? Anti COVID? Pretty yeah, anti disease? Yeah, I'm with yeah, you. Yeah, vote guys. for me, man. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> Loud and clear. Vote for me. All right. That is going to be the conclusion of the Fantasy Footballers podcast today. But. Do not miss tomorrow's episode. We have a head-to-head -head mock draft. Mayhem oh, shall man. ensue. I will do everything I can to make my two co-hosts uncomfortable, squirmy, and uh, I'm going to laugh a lot. And we'll see if they can. You know, we'll see if they can react to the mayhem. I have a strong prediction for my team. Yeah, mayhem won't phase this guy. No mayhem. No. Mm. Un mayhemable. All right. Well, we'll see. Tomorrow, Mock Draft Mayhem. Check out the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. Until then, goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.